Thanks for stopping by the Nomadic Native Channel. Uh, I'm going to try and accomplish a couple of things in this video. First, I want to um, give you a tour of our Winnebago Sightseer 35N. This is 2004 model. And uh, that's a tour. I'm going to do a tour for the channel and also. Uh, this video will establish a baseline uh, for our starting point for where we're at uh, before we start putting a lot more time into uh, living in our RV. So it's pretty standard on the outside. It's got a 5500 watt Onan generator. Uh, dump station is just like any other RV. It's got a 5,000 pound hitch. I installed a Blue Ox tow bar and we tow the Jeep Wrangler. It's a 2003 Jeep Wrangler, 4x4. Uh, there's quite a bit of storage underneath. It's on 19 and a half inch wheels. Uh, it has a 20 gallon propane tank. Let's go inside. Start with the cockpit area. These are uh, captain seats do swivel around and become part of the living room. Uh, when we bought this coach two years ago, it had a huge um, regular tube TV up there, really heavy one. Took that out and put in the uh, flat screen with a built-in DVD player. Uh, so that's uh, the one upgrade that I did. When we bought it, it had uh, 38,000 miles on it. It's currently got 46,482. It's a Ford V10. Runs like a champ. Uh, for the Jeep, we use um, this Brake Buddy supplemental braking system. That's the remote right there in the, in the uh, center console. Uh, it's coming around here. We have a uh, table right there. The table stows for when we're traveling. Comes out real easy when we need it. We always travel with this big cooler. Uh, keep drinks, lots of ice and all that in it. So we don't have to get up and run into to the back just to get ice or something to drink or some water or whatever. It also sits right there between the seats just like that and keeps our dogs from coming forward and bugging us while we're trying to drive or whatever. Allows them to get up there to so get their you know head scratched or whatever but it keeps them from getting up and interfering with us when we're trying to drive. Uh, the stereo system up here is uh, wired throughout the coach and that is a backup camera hanging underneath the TV up there. So you know pretty standard it's uh, got everything that a normal gas coach has a leveling system uh, all that so the living area we've got this um, chair here that turns swivels and rocks the uh, table these chairs captain chairs I think I mentioned they turn around and become part of the living room if you want them to and then you have the couch it uh, jackknives into a bed, a sleeping surface. Uh, for storage in here, we have these. Uh, this storage shelf up here and keep everything. Uh, I don't know if that's really what you would call organized, but at least it's not, you know, sliding around and bumping around while we're going down the road. But um, chaotic organization, let's call it. Uh, this cabinet up here will keep the trusty dusty fly swatter. Uh, all the paperwork for the coach, the boat, and the Jeep. Uh, most of the uh, dog stuff, leashes, and everything like that stays up here, and some other items. And that pretty much uh, sums up the living room. Dining area. We have this dinette, and I considered taking this dinette out. 
uh, or at least taking the bench seats out and putting in chairs. But uh, we've decided against it for a couple of reasons. Primarily, underneath both benches is lots of storage. It goes all the way back. And you can also get to the storage just by going underneath the cushions and lifting up that board. The table goes down, the cushions come in and lay flat, and it becomes another sleeping surface. So if I got rid of the, the, this, uh, the benches, I get rid of the storage, and I get rid of an extra sleeping surface. I'm not sure why that's important since we've never had anybody spend the night with us and but um, we do have grandkids and uh, I think uh, Nana Rhea uh, is concerned about that so she wants to keep all of her sleeping surfaces and uh, I can't blame her. Uh, the storage up here we use for food and we pack it pretty tight when we're headed out. Uh, well there's a whole case of ramen so anyway That's quite a bit of storage. Come around, oh, there's our fabulous art piece. Coming around to the kitchen. It's fully equipped, has a microwave, propane three burner stove, propane oven, and I have one of these new wave hot plates. That works really great. Uh, lots of drawers and the drawers have stops on them you know so when you're driving they don't just slide out but that's a junk drawer and you know drawers those two big drawers down there we use for pots and pans um, dual sink and then you, you know you've got the cutting board insert of course you also have this big cutting board and you have this flip up extra counter space down here. I don't think we've ever used it, but anyway, it's there if we need it. Uh, also have the fire extinguisher, of course. Uh, one of the things that, uh, well, these cabinets up here. I know this looks kind of strange, and I probably need to explain what's going on here. Let me turn that fan down. Maybe you can hear me a little bit better. You see it's got a shelf in there, and the shelf is raised up as high as it'll go. The reason, and, you know, I've made a, basically a cup shelf up there. Uh, the reason for that is because of the solar system. And I'll explain that when I go over the solar system later in the video. But the reason I'm showing you this now is because... Uh, at some point in the future I want to change this and maybe put another shelf in here or a spice rack or something of that nature. Uh, I like how high that shelf is because it gives me room for coffee pots both electric and uh, non-electric percolator type. Uh, but I think I would like to have a divider in here with another shelf for this side so I could divide stuff up a little better. Anyway, that's for something in the future. Oh, back to the wiring. You can see the wiring right here. So the reason that's there is because it's the only way I had to bring the wires in from the roof and I didn't have enough wire with the kit that I bought to mount the wires up there on the ceiling or on the back wall, you know, back there or whatever so they're just laid at the back of the shelf and that's how it is right now and it is what it is at some point in the future that's going to change over to the refrigerator we really like this refrigerator now a lot of the newer coaches are coming with uh, great big residential fridges and that's wonderful I suppose but they don't run on gas, they run only on electric. And uh, that's why we don't want one. We like this because 
we can put it on auto and it auto selects if it has electric available it uses electric if it doesn't have electric available it uses gas uh, that works really good when we're hooked up to shore power it runs on electric if we're not hooked up to shore power and not running the solar inverter uh, then it runs off of gas if we're boondocking I just flip it over to gas it runs off of gas and you know we save the batteries for something later you know other things works out really great we like this fridge and uh, it's a real contention with us about upgrading our coach at some point in the future because uh, if we ever do we don't want a residential fridge we want one of these uh, the whole goal with our coach from day one was to be able to go anywhere park anywhere we want hook up to nothing and everything works that was our goal and I'll detail for you how we've accomplished it uh, so continuing on we have uh, some pull outs over here pull out cabinets or a pantry a pull out pantry let's call it those uh, those drawers go way back and pull all the way out and hold lots of stuff uh, the power panel just like any other you know Winnebago power panel uh, no real surprises there hi this is uh, a wardrobe lots of room to hang stuff lots of floor space great big drawers and yeah they they pretty much uh, you know yeah go all the way back so lots of room there on both sides of the bed we have uh, huge storage drawers down here nightstands lights above the bed uh, there's also storage up here and speakers uh, coming from the stereo up front reading lights uh, plug-ins the bed lifts up and it's got a huge storage area underneath the bed like most RVs have down here at the bottom you have those these drawers right here or doors lots of storage down here at the bottom huge storage above that's a digital TV that's going to be changed out just like the uh, tube TV in front that's coming out and uh, what's going to go in back here the TV up front is uh, regular AC electric I don't know if you can see it but there's both AC and DC plugs back there when I change out this TV I'm going to put in a uh, TV that the flat screen that runs on 9 volt or uh, 12 volts yeah, I've been saying 9 volts I mean 12 volts <laughs> So uh, a flat screen that runs on 12 volts, and I'll plug it into that 12 volt plug right there. Uh, control for the rear AC. This coach has two AC units on top. This is uh, the hanging wardrobe with three full-size drawers down below. You have the same thing on the other side. Nice big mirror at the back. Hi. And let's see, what else do we have? Well, how about a bathroom? Oh, I forgot to show you. We got a door. So we can uh, shut the bedroom off from the rest of the coach if we need to. And the bathroom, full service. Full service toilet, medicine cabinet, lots of storage underneath even has a magazine rack gotta have a magazine rack right uh, we do have AC ducting in here an overhead fan that I hate and will be changing out soon um, heat duct in the bathroom and a nice big shower 
Well, big for an RV, let's say. Here's one of the things that's uh, going to be fixed pretty soon. You can see, you probably saw that I have this uh, uh, quick seal kitchen and bath adhesive caulk. Here's why. The top of the shower. Watch. See that? Watch this. Okay, so I need to use that all the way around the top, get that good and sealed back in. Uh, this is not a one-piece shower here. This is a two-piece, evidently. It has a tub on the bottom and the walls, and the tub on the bottom and the walls have a seam. Get that out of there. Have a seam that need to be resealed, so I'm going to take that uh, caulk out of there and reseal it. And we got a nice skylight up there. So, big mirror in back. Uh, hanging towel racks. Uh, you can see that, uh, well, we've owned this coach for a couple of years. Um, you can see that we've not changed anything. We've not painted. We've not hung up pictures. Uh, we haven't uh, anything at all, pretty much, uh, on the inside here. And uh, we've talked about it in the past, and Maria's concern is that, well, if we ever decide to sell it someday, uh, people not, might not like the changes that we've made. Well, uh, I don't like that idea. There's some things that uh, I would like to do in here and we're going to do in here so stay tuned for that so there's our baseline that's uh, our 2004 Winnebago Sightseer 35N 